Hello everyone. Project for a metal head. <laughs> so the owner of this lovely uh, blue car is next to me. We just installed a very, very extremely simple system into it and I'm gonna just run through everything. So I went through, through the factory grommet. I didn't drill a hole. Four gauge wire, uh, properly terminated, ferrules, fuse fixed properly, goes in there. Then we have here, under the seat, a five channel hertz amplifier. So it's gonna feed uh, front, rears, and the subwoofer. I made the wiring, we ran everything under there. So this is gonna be at the later date cut off because we literally have no time. So this is a five channel. Then under there, we fitted a Helix DSP uh, dot two which is an older one. So for now, at the very, very moment, we're feeding only the front speakers and the subwoofer and nothing else. Uh, speakers are stock in door locations. In the back, we have an Alpine Type R, 12 inch in a very, very shabby box, but it's fine. So it's fixed with Velcro. We have all the cables properly terminated. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to share RTA measurements because I just literally tuned this car in, what, how long it took us? An hour? Yeah, something like that. And I'm going to share the measurements and we're going to talk about this more. Before we go into RTA measurements, I decided to go through the system again just to clear some things and explain a bit more because I literally had two minutes to shoot that video because we just finished it and he's supposed to go home and I was supposed to literally run to the nursery to pick up my daughter. Uh, installing that system was fun because both of us, my friend and me, we were working on different schedules. <clears throat> we Both of us have children, they go to nursery and we needed to find time where to, how to install it without sacrificing any like work time. So we had one day a week, which was Thursday, and in the morning, like literally maybe 9 to 12 or 9 to 1, so three hours. So we did this in three Thursdays. So first uh, day when he came, we ran the power wire, speaker wires, and the signal wire through the grommets because it was my first time touching another car. So it was just a learning process. So we did that on the first day. On the second day, we fitted the amplifier. Uh, I used six mil birch ply sheets that I had. I put that sheet under the carpet, amplifier on top. So like the carpet was sandwiched between the birch ply and the amplifier. I used um, machine bolts and inserts into the wood so that it wouldn't go anywhere. And that amplifier is, is solid. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to move. The reason I use birch ply because uh, I don't have anything else. I don't, I don't have plastics. It's just some, some wood that I had lying around. The main goal for the system was cheap, easy, and fast. So we had uh, those two days. And third day today, which was we fitted the DSP. We finished some wiring, hit the wires, and we tuned it. So the tuning part took... Uh, an hour just over now maybe an hour and a half and it was fast just because it was literally two front speakers and the subwoofer and nothing else so <clears throat> how the system works is uh, the signal goes from the head unit uh, into DSP's high level inputs from there via RCA's it goes into the five channel amplifier so we're using um, at the moment I'm using only three channels on the DSP uh, front left, front right, and uh, one for the sub. But we're planning to connect the rear speakers as well later on. And um, uh, everything on Amplify is basically bypassed. And we set the crossovers. I EQ'd the front two speakers and EQ'd the subwoofer. Just made sure that everything is kind of fine. So uh, the speakers are factory which I have no idea what they are. I don't know the size, maybe it's five and a quarter, maybe six and a half. Uh, they're in the corners of the doors. And I don't know if they're coaxials or just, my guess is just full range paper speakers from factory. There's no tweeters, uh, no, no mid range, nothing, just mids in the door and that's it. Just two speakers, left, right. 
our plan for the future is maybe to install like a wide band somewhere on the dash in, in a pod or I don't know whatever it, 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 it will depend on the budget and time so talking about the budget uh, this system is extremely budget friendly that was the main goal because in the beginning he was just wanted some bass like everybody else so we bought the Hertz amplifier for 140 pounds we got a subwoofer for 70 so that's 210 uh, we spend 200 for the DSP, so that's 410, and 100 ish on the wirings and stuff. So, like, uh, uh, I didn't cut any wires, any factory wires. We used all the um, connectors from the head unit. I used uh, Parrot, you know, the Parrot Bluetooth thingy, Parrot integration kit. So, it basically goes into the head unit and you have like wires all spliced up. So, we use that. Uh, we use four gauge power wire with fuse and everything so all the wires was like close to 100 pounds so everything all system apart from labor was 500 quid so everything is second hand the the sub is second hand uh, the amplifier and the dsp everything is second hand it was fun like i bought the d we found the dsp and it didn't have the power plug the little power plug so i had to find it on ebay for like literally two quid a different power plug but it works fine. Everything is fine. It, the DSP came with the presets, so somebody didn't clean them up. So I had to reset it and do it. <coughs> so today, uh, what we did, we measured the factory head unit to find the clipping point with a scope. It was it went up to 40 on the volume knob. So 29 was before clipping, 30 was started to clip. So I told him 29 is your max volume. Don't go over there over 29 and keep it there and what else so we we found the crossovers i crossed the speakers i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about the the tuning part later on but the thing is this system is extremely simple extremely budget friendly friendly and very little time so all in all it's like nine ten hours for the whole thing and 500 quid and the results are much better than factory I hope he's gonna like it but for the future uh wide bands so the future is gonna be wide bands instead of we're gonna use the rear amplifier channels for the wide bands or maybe another amplifier i don't know we'll see it depends on the budget because now if i'm gonna plug something like uh cheap wide bands for 20 quid each just to make some pause or something it's gonna be much much better because now all the sound stage is literally floor level because you have only speakers on the phone next to your legs and that's it nothing else and yeah let's see the rtas so this was fun to measure because to be honest i never measured like a factory system before so i had no idea what to expect um first thing that i did i measured the speakers front left and right just near field just to see uh what should i expect from them so as you can see, they play from 50, 60, from somewhere there, up to 13K, 10, 12, 13K, which is, I think they probably they're going to be just paper ones. I don't know. And there's a, a dip on both speakers at 2.2. So I guess this is going to be like a resonance of a door card or something, because the thing is, nothing was done to the doors and there's no sound deadening literally nothing factory as it is so i think i think it's just a resonance uh, then from the driver's seat left let's pull this down a bit left and right so this is no crossovers no nothing less full range uh how they were playing uh before from the deck so you can see there's some dips there's loads of uh in the mid bass region some in the mid range and then it goes down it's expected because it's in the bottom in the corners of the doors so the high frequencies won't reach your ear you know that easily so that's what that was expected so let's take the left one uh, I applied a crossover at 90 hertz just because it's a factory speaker I don't want to stress it too much I know they were playing full range before 
and they still survive because they're still playing but uh, I just wanted to be safe so I crossed them at 90 and just left it at there crossed them at 90 hertz and left uh, I queued them I took a target line I pulled these dips at uh, 2.5 and 3.5k a bit up and I just EQ'd them kind of flat-ish whatever it was because literally remember I had one hour to do this so I had no time at all and it was like this so it was much better from which one left from this to that much better results here yeah? So, right, exactly the same, apply the crossover first, 90 hertz, went down, and then EQ'd, just like that. So, again, I had to pull a bit up at, like, 3k, and pulled all of this down. It's still plenty loud enough, so it's totally fine. So, as you can see, uh, with the crossover at 90 hertz, it's kind of flattish. It's not that bad for factory, you know, and, and literally just one run through uh, REW Auto EQ and it gave me this. So I, I showed how I use Auto EQ on um, how I EQ my system in the other video. So if you want to check that out, you can do that. And it plays high, so it's totally fine. Again, don't look at these um, SPL values, the dBs, because it's all, it's not calibrated, so it's not real. It was like 70, 80 dB when we were playing. So this, then, when I play them together, there are some issues. So they don't play together very, very nicely. I did some basic time alignment with a tape measure in literally a minute because again, we were super, super tight on time. But this was something interesting. So 150, usually when we have speakers in the driver's side, you see this on the single speaker response. But in our case, so we in UK, so our driver's side is the right side, uh, FT. You, yeah right side so you see this there is a little bit but it's, 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 it's not that prominent and the thing is after the EQ uh, right right after the EQ that dip was not there and on the left one as well it's not there so the thing is this dip is something to do how both of these speakers interact left and right so what I did because again I was very pressed on time what I did I just applied an all pass filter on one of these speakers at 150 hertz. And what that did with the all pass filter, it fixed that dip and it sums now totally fine. So, in order to make this more flatter, I could have run another time through uh, REW auto EQ function, but I just didn't. I just left it like this. So, this is the front, again, front, left and right, two speakers, nothing else, yeah? Crossed at 90 hertz. Then the sub. So, the sub, whew, it has a lot of level because the thing is, those factory speakers, they don't keep up with the sub because sub is, is too powerful for the system currently. So, we had to pull the level down quite a lot. So, this is full range. It peaks at 50 big big massive peak and it's very very boomy so i crossed it at 90 as well sub crossed it at 90 and then uh eq'd and pulled it down quite a lot so i pulled it down like 15 db and i eq'd all this this massive peak i just eq'd it like they just cut it from the top to make it less boomy so this peak, uh, uh, I cut it down later on, but I didn't record it because, again, pressed on time, no time, no nothing. So this peak was fixed as well. So I have a normal kind of slope. This is normal. And then I play them together, front and the sub. They summed up, not bad. So this peak, I kind of fixed it. Uh, let's remove this. And uh, just a few more touches, what I did, I raised here between 100 and 200, just a tiny bit, like 3 dB plus, just to have something similar like this. So, is it great? Of 
course not, it's not great, but it's much better than factory was. So we have kind of, if you take a target line of like here, 45. So I have this peak at five and these two little dips. So plus minus five. But if I don't count these dips, it's not that bad. It's like, what, plus minus two, three dB? It's not that bad. This has a rising response. That's a crossover region that needs to work a bit on. And I have a rising response up to 25 hertz, 26. So he likes a little bit more bass. He's he's a metal head, but he likes bass. I don't know, like, like every other person. So this is the final result for now, which I managed to do in literally one hour with three speakers. Uh, we will have another tuning session later on to do proper time alignment with um, impulse response and just to EQ a bit more and fix little bits and pieces. But now it's just literally in one hour. So I'm very happy about this. Now, how does it sound? <clears throat> how should I put it? Factory system with absolutely no soundproofing. So from the subwoofer, everything rattles. From the doors, everything rattles. Now, the spectral balance is not bad. It's okay. It's kind of, well, I'm not going to call it flat, but it's flatter than this. Yeah. So it's not that bad. So I am happy with the result. Now, the sound stage, as I mentioned before, it's down at the floor on your leg level because there's only two speakers at the floor and there is nothing else. And it is what it is, but it sounds much, much better, yeah? So, uh, 10 hours spent installing, maybe a few more hours here and there just for the cables, and 500 quid, 500 pounds, and you get something like this, which is much, much better than factory. So I am very happy with this. I'm going to wait for him to listen to the system and come back to me in a few days and see his feedback, and we're going to see what we can do more with this thing so there's going to be a continuation with maybe wide bands maybe something else we will see so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one